today we're going to talk about how stress can cause lower back pain, specifically how psychological stress can create chronic muscle tension in the hip flexor muscle group, specifically the iliopsoas or psoas muscle, which is a deep hip flexor which attaches directly to the lumbar spine, and that chronic muscle tightness can create pain in the lower back. The psoas has been implicated as a major reactor in the human stress response by many anatomical reviews. In other words, it's a link between our psychological experience and our physical or somatic experience by reflexively tightening in reaction to our fight or flight response. And we're going to take a look at several of those peer-reviewed studies today. You see, stressful experiences cause a release of adrenaline and cortisol into our systems, which create muscle tightening. And if these stressful experiences drag on and become chronic, that muscle tightening can also become chronic, leading to stiffness in the hips and lower back and creating chronic lower back pain. But not all the muscles reflexively tighten when we get stressed. If they did, we would just become rigid and dysfunctional. So only certain muscles, like the psoas, tighten and other muscles become inhibited like the deep abdominal muscles and some theorize that this is the body's attempt to bring us into a protective position called the fetal position and normally an acute stress will go away and our body can return from the protective mode back to our normal posture and functioning but in today's society many stresses are chronic and our nervous system remains in a heightened state and muscles like the psoas remain in a contracted or tightened state instead of relaxing again. Now we're going to look at several peer-reviewed studies about the relationship between stress and psoas tension, as well as psoas tension and chronic lower back pain, and see if this theory really holds up. Finally, we'll talk about some possible solutions if you're a person that suffers from either chronic lower back pain or chronic psoas tension. Let's get right into it. One study published in 2023 measured iliopsoas tightness with the modified Thomas test and psychological stress with heart rate variability and salivary cortisol levels. There were 39 adults in this study, about half of which had chronic lower back pain already. The chronic lower back pain patients showed significantly tighter iliopsoas muscles, notably more so on the right side with 9 degrees of less hip extension when measured by the modified Thomas test. And there were significant correlations found between this iliopsoas tightness and higher psychological stress. The study shows a direct link between stress and psoas muscle tightness, and they concluded that individuals with chronic lower back pain tend to have a tighter iliopsoas than pain-free people, and the association between this tension and stress is stronger in people with chronic lower back pain. One limitation of the study is we don't know if it was the chicken or the egg that came first. In other words, we don't know if the chronic lower back pain caused these individuals to become more stressed or if the stress caused these individuals to have more chronic lower back pain. But one of the most interesting things about this study is that even in the individuals in the pain-free group, the individuals without back pain, they found a correlation between higher stress levels and tighter iliopsoas muscles. So this kind of rules out the factor that the chronic lower back pain caused the stress or caused the iliopsoas tightness. And this does lend support to the idea that everyday stress can subtly increase psoas muscle tone or stiffness, even if it hasn't led to pain yet. Another relevant study published in 2024 in the Journal of Clinical Medicine looked at 71st year graduate students with an average age of 19. And while this is a very young sample size and they didn't have chronic lower back pain, they did find a significant correlation between high stress levels in these students and episodes of lower back pain. And in fact, students with high stress were nearly four times more likely to have lower back pain than students without the high stress levels. The psoas muscle is sometimes nicknamed the stress muscle in yoga and bodywork literature due to observations that sometimes releasing tension in this area can provoke an emotional release in patients. And while this is anecdotal and not a controlled study, it does align with the physiological pathway of the startle reflex. A sudden scare or chronic fear can trigger the psoas to contract, as if to assume the fetal position, which we mentioned earlier, to protect the vital organs in our abdomen. And learning how to relax or lengthen this muscle has shown in the research to be an effective way to reduce chronic lower back pain. 
a randomized clinical trial published in 2019 in the Journal of Exercise Rehabilitation looked at 72 office workers, all with chronic lower back pain, and divided them into four groups, each receiving a different intervention to see who would come out the best. The first group was exercise only. The second group was psychotherapy or relaxation training only. The third group was both exercise and relaxation training. And the fourth was a control group that received nothing. Group number three, the exercise and relaxation group, had the best overall outcomes with significant reductions in lower back pain and anxiety levels, as well as significant increases in hip flexor length. This shows that addressing both the physical and psychological components of chronic lower back pain leads to reduced anxiety, increased psoas flexibility, and pain relief. This study shows a connection between stress and psoas tightness because the relaxation intervention aimed at reducing psychological stress when combined with exercise had the greatest improvement in hip flexor range of motion, showing an alleviation of psoas tightness, and participants had the greatest reduction in lower back pain. So what does all of this mean for you? Simply learning this information can be helpful to know that back pain is not exclusively physical and to notice the times when you're a little more stressed out in your body and how it might be causing you to have more back pain so you can take steps to reduce your stress and also to be aware that back pain is also physical as well. So you have to treat it from both angles. As someone who suffered from chronic lower back pain for over a decade, and it definitely caused me a lot of stress, which probably contributed to my back pain even more, I want to talk about how chronic pain can absolutely affect our mental health. It not only caused me stress and anxiety and depression, but it also affected my relationships and everything in my life. See, it works in both directions, the chronic pain and the stress, and they influence each other. And I was able to climb out of the back pain spiral. So I want to talk a little bit about my process so it might help you to be able to do the same. My approach was absolutely to try and lengthen my hip flexors because there is direct correlation between hip flexor tightness and chronic lower back pain. And I didn't just use simple stretching to do that. I used a lot of functional movements and my understanding of reciprocal inhibition, which can inhibit muscles in the body like the hip flexors. And I share this entire process in the core balance training program. But I also did an entire lifestyle change, kind of like how dieting doesn't really work. You have to change your lifestyle of eating. I did that with my body. I changed my life to sit less. I changed my life to be more active, which is shown in the research to be very effective for reducing chronic lower back pain. And I made lots of lifestyle changes. I share a lot of this stuff in the program, but that's not why I'm talking about this. It's more to just inspire you. If you actually want to make real permanent change, consider real actual changes to your life. And that's the best thing you can do. Probably it involves getting outside more, spending less time on your screens, and also focusing on the psychological components of your health as well. So I hope that inspires you and that you have a great rest of your day and get outside if you can. And I'll be back next week to talk about a different topic for getting out of the back pain spiral for good. And until then, get down on the floor and connect to your core.